I was uh, technically uh, capable of, and uh, provided with equipment to, to do whatever I wanted to study science, and that was certainly my, my, my intention, and my parents guided me. Um, I built a, a big Tesla coil to make big sparks, and I did induction heating like they're starting to use now in kitchens. <laughs> I, I proved that that worked, and I built our first TV because TVs were just becoming available. And I built a whole series of things when I was a kid. My parents were both PhD chemists, and that was sort of a rule in the family, everybody should be a PhD. My mother was, was not able to work because of the theories at the time. Uh, so she took on other things like running the Girl Scouts and running everything around. <laughs> My mother ran Girl Scout camps. One of them, when I was in college, needed a telephone system. And so I went to the junkyard and picked up old uh, transistors and built a transistorized computer exchange, which may have been one of the first in history. I was interested in electronics in particular and, and wanted to continue in that field. I thought it was the most, uh, would have the biggest change in the world coming. I did my thesis work on the TX2 at Lincoln. In the middle of my thesis work, Wes Clark uh, left and so did Papian, who was the head of the group, and Bill Papian, they went left together. And so there was no leadership to the group, basically. And I just sort of took over managing all the people. They gave me uh, the job of doing the, of making the TX2 from a, a bare machine with no software to build the software, to build the operating system and the compilers and everything. So I built all the software up from the ground for the time sharing system and for the compiler and assembler and up from a plug board. Lick was talking about, we were talking about what's the next thing, what, where, where was the next challenge and so on. And he was talking about his thoughts about the needing a network. I decided that looking at networking next would be a quite um, attractive field because it could go somewhere quickly. At that point, I even was in the government uh, taking Lick's place in DARPA and he, uh, gave me a contract because I asked to, to do this, to, to work on testing this theory of whether we, what we needed to do to do the network, working with some programmers I hired with Tom Merrill from his group. And um, we, we built a, a uh, network between Lincoln Labs and SDC in California. That showed that we could easily make the computers work together quite effectively. We could send a program to, or enter a program or do whatever we want with the other computer at the other end. We could just log in and do things. So I, I was convinced that I should go to ARPA and I, I then moved uh, my family and went to uh, work in the Pentagon. In DARPA, Bob was the director. I was chief scientist to something or other. And it, ran the program in the office because I was the technical math uh, computer person. The first activity was to get all of the universities and research sites to agree on this and to participate because you can't build a network and, and, and have something happen unless something will happen with it. So, so what, what happened at the end of our, uh, my six years, I figured that was enough at any one place. We started selling it downtown San Francisco because we'd be, be near the FCC and near the near the AT and T's uh, digital center. The design of Telenet was to uh, build a network where it was also a little bit like NCP in that we managed all of the interfaces and knew what they were. I, I knew I had to have a standard interface, and so the first thing I did was to write a protocol, X25 and go to CCITT and working with British Telecom and Bell Canada and Japan, put together a, a proposal to put that into the uh, CCITT so that we would have a standard. It, that went in record time almost. 
and in, I think it was in 75 that we got the standard finalized and built our own switch to do it much more efficiently. I sold equipment to BT and to Canada. Our, our equipment worked beautifully and the, the result was the network worked extremely well. I think that people shouldn't just look at the internet and say, who are the fathers of the internet? That's, that's a false concept. I mean, a number of us worked on it. There's things you have to understand from the past of why we did things and maybe they shouldn't have been done that way anymore. Uh, maybe they should be uh, revisited from time to time. And so we need to have that history and understand it.